This Headless Professor video deals with scales for measurement. We're going to start with the simplest of all measurements, and that is nominal scaling. What that means is that we're going to take each individual case and classify it into a specific category. Now, what's important is that you're able to distinguish between binary nominal scaling in which we only have two categories, and multiple nominal scaling, in which we have more than two categories. Binary nominal scaling takes each case and classifies it one way or the other, and there are only two possibilities. Here are some typical binary nominal scales encountered in research male or female, experimental group or control group, the subject passed the test or the subject failed the test. Here's an example of nominal scaling that is binary. Here we see a total of seven cases of plastic tops. We can classify them into a red category, of which we have four cases, and a blue category, in which we have three cases. Red and blue, that's pretty easy. Okay, so that was binary nominal scaling, but sometimes we have multiple nominal scaling. This means that we have more than two categories. We see this, for example, in denominational affiliation. We have Baptists and Jews and Catholics and Muslims and Buddhists, many categories. And then we see this in ethnicity. We have Americans of European extraction, African Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans. We see this in consumer behavior. Which automobile did the customer purchase? Was it a Chevy, a Ford, or a Dodge? We see this in clinical psychology. When we look at diagnostic classification, was the patient classified as being depressed, suffering from dementia, or perhaps an anxiety disorder? We could see the example here. Now let's look at these cases and see how we would categorize them. It looks like we're going to need four categories. We're going to have one for the greens, black, red, and blue. Four categories this time. Then we come to a more precise scaling known as ordinal scaling. This is where we have different levels or ranks within a variable. For example, if we want to measure the frequency that uh, an individual person does something or a certain event happens, does it occur always, usually, sometimes, or never? Notice that always is more frequent than usually. Usually is more frequent than sometimes, and sometimes is more frequent than never. Or we could say daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, never. Once again, daily is more frequent than weekly, and so forth. Ordinal scales are also used when we have different levels of evaluation, like Excellent, good, fair, or poor. Likert scales in social psychology would be another example of ordinal scaling. We present a given statement and we see the subject's reaction. Totally agree, mostly agree, neutral, mostly disagree, totally disagree.
if we're going to rank our cases on the variable. Who comes in first, second, third, fourth? That would be ordinal scaling as well. If we're going to evaluate these four blue containers as to size, well, let's see. This would be first, this would be second, this would be third, this would be fourth, that would be ordinal scaling. Then we come to numerical scaling. Now perhaps in your statistics class you learn this as ratio or interval scaling, and you learn to distinguish between discrete and continuous numbers. Well, the good news is that for the statistics laboratory, you don't have to maintain all these distinctions. You just have to know when you're dealing with any of these kinds of scales because they all use the same statistical techniques. Whenever you have scores, events, or units, we're dealing with ratio or interval scaling. Here are some examples. If you're measuring time, such as 62 years old or 25 seconds, temperature, such as 71 degrees Fahrenheit, the output of a worker, such as 15 units, or the scores on a test, like 82 right. Any of these are numerical, and you're dealing with ratio or interval scaling. If you have any questions or comments about this or other Headless Professor videos, go ahead and contact me, brink at usa.com.